Toulouse is often called La Ville Rose, aka the Pink City, due to so much of the city being built from its distinctive red bricks, making it a unique and fascinating place. In this top 10, I'm going to show you the best churches to explore, the famous river, a bunch of awesome museums and a great place to stop for a bite to eat. Let's go! Let's start in the heart of the city in its famous Capitol Square, which is a huge urban plaza surrounded by historic buildings. When we visited in November, they were setting up a big Christmas market in the square, so it was difficult to get a sense of its scale, but we were still able to walk around and explore the shops and restaurants surrounding it. Here we found the amazing chocolate shop Maison Pilon, where we bought some really yummy cakes. The main feature is the Capitol building, which is the City Hall of Toulouse, which was built in the 18th century in neoclassical style, but with the characteristic red bricks of Toulouse giving it a distinctive look. Even better is the interior, which can be visited free of charge. However, it's only open when the city hall is not being used, so check before you go. The visitable parts include an interesting inner courtyard with some very ornate decorations. Following this are a series of ever more spectacular rooms, all of which are decorated with fascinating frescoes and paintings. This culminates in the staggeringly impressive Hall of the Illustrious which is a long, grand space that is artfully decorated with some colourful and interesting frescoes. Next up is one of the many outstanding churches in the city, the Basilica of St. Cernin. Formerly an abbey, it was built between 1080 and 1120 in a Romanesque style and is epically big. In fact, it's one of the largest Romanesque buildings in Europe and is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The exterior is monumental and imposing, at over 100 metres in length, so take a few minutes to walk around it. However, it's the interior that is really jaw-dropping, with the huge dimensions compared to most other Romanesque buildings. The nave is extremely long and looks amazing with its lengthy barrel-vaulted ceiling. Further down, you can access the transepts and even go under the choir into the crypt. The building is full of treasures and other fascinating objects to look at, so it's worth spending a good amount of time in this wonderful building. As a bonus in this location, and more or less next door to the Basilica, is one of the best museums in Toulouse. The Musée Saint-Raymond, which houses a great archaeology collection. It is housed in an 18th century building, and here you can explore everything from ancient Egypt through to ancient Greece, and then on to ancient Rome. Yep, that's a whole lot of old stuff. Of particular note is the vast array of Roman statues, including some pretty famous faces like this one of Commodus, who was the baddie in the Gladiator movie. Toulouse sits on the banks of the River Garonne, and from here you can stroll around and take in some lovely views of the city and its bridges. When the weather is warm, it seems a hot spot for locals to come and soak up the sun and relax. There are several viewpoints on both sides of the river offering some amazing panoramas and we spent a fair amount of time here taking photos and time lapses. The best spot seemed to be around the Port de la Durade, which was especially good for sunsets and evening shots. As a bonus, there is also a fascinating church here called the Basilica of Our Lady of Durard, which has an ornate interior and is famous for its copy of a 15th century Black Madonna. Our next location is on the far side of the river and is a modern art museum called Les Abattoirs, which, as the name suggests, was formerly an abattoir. It became a museum in the year 2000 and specialises in modern art. When we visited, most of the exhibition spaces were showing a temporary exhibition of works by Alberto Giacometti, so it's possible there will be something else on display when you visit. The interior has a large and impressive main hall, as well as several smaller side rooms, which make it easy to admire the artworks. As a bonus location next door is a hospital with an amazing domed chapel that can be visited for a small fee. 
This impressive building is very interesting to explore and is full of paintings and other artifacts, not to mention the incredible dome. Our next stop is another famous medieval church, the Church of the Jacobins. Construction started in 1230 in the Gothic style and it was originally a monastery. The interior is large and lofty with huge Gothic windows that bathe everything in soft glowing light. It looks magical. The high vaulted ceiling is supported on a series of slender central columns in the middle of the room, making it very different to most other churches, especially when combined with its sheer height. One of the most important features in the building is the relic rehousing the remains of St. Thomas Aquinas, which can be found in the middle of the nave. The rest of the monastic buildings can be visited for a small fee, but this is totally worth it. There are cloisters, halls and other interesting rooms. Here are some highlights. Our next location isn't really a location as we take a stroll around the historic city centre. Toulouse is the fourth largest city in France and is somewhat unique because of its abundance of red brick buildings everywhere and this makes it a delightful place to explore. As the buildings tend to be smaller and the streets narrower than you would expect from such a big city and this gives it a small town intimate feeling. There is no grid plan either and it's quite easy to accidentally come across interesting little squares or meeting areas. There are also plenty of interesting buildings and churches to look at, not to mention shops, restaurants and bars to relax in. It has everything you could need. One very interesting little building in the old town is the Chapel of the Carmelites, which is a former convent built in the 17th century. Its main feature is a stunning painted chapel which is covered in lovely frescoes so make sure you don't miss it when exploring the old town. No great French city is complete without a great food hall and Toulouse has an excellent one which is our next location on the list. The Victor Hugo covered market is a large modern building with its ground floor being a fantastic food market. Here you can buy lots of yummy treats to eat. We had some fresh bread and cakes as well as some of these empanadas which were served hot and were really delicious. This place really contains all the food you can imagine, including an incredible amount of different cheeses. Makes my mouth water all over again just thinking about this place. The next floor up contains restaurants if you want to sit down and eat but these were closed when we visited. The rest of the building is a car park and you can get up onto the top floor to look over the city. Next up is the Museum de Toulouse, another interesting location housed in a former monastery. It contains a natural history museum and botanical gardens. It was founded in 1796 and moved to its current location in 1865. The old building is quite impressive, especially with its entry hall that contains a stuffed elephant being dive-bombed by a pterodactyl dinosaur skeleton. The building has a large modern extension which houses all sorts including a big collection of skeletons of just about everything you can think of. There is also a big collection of insects, some of which are quite big and of course there are some dinosaur skeletons including a T-Rex skull. The exterior of the museum contains the botanical gardens which were formerly part of the university. Here you'll find all sorts of plants as well as some greenhouses with many tropical species. As a bonus, in this location there is also a large pleasant park to explore called the Jardin des Plants. The next location is Toulouse Cathedral which is a little unusual. Let's call it a cathedral of two halves. The history of the building is too complex to get into but as with many such buildings it started as a Romanesque building before being reconstructed in the Gothic style over the course of many centuries but mainly between the 13th and 16th centuries. 
The exterior is somewhat odd looking and you can see two different looking parts which will become more evident on the inside. The choir is a newer part and looks like a normal gothic cathedral. It's very impressive with its vaulted ceiling. Moving to the back of the church you see clearly the two halves. It's not unusual for cathedrals to have been built in two styles over the course of centuries but usually they at least line up. This one clearly does not, making it quite unique and interesting and definitely worth spending some time having a good look around. Our 10th location is the Aeroscopia Museum. This is an amazing aerospace museum, however it's a little tricky to reach and it's on the edge of the city. You will need to get the T1 tram all the way to its second from last stop called Aero Constellation. From here you then have a somewhat unpleasant walk over and under a motorway following a pedestrian footpath. You will see the planes quite clearly, but it's still tricky to navigate to. If there is a better way to get here by public transport, let me know in the comments, as it seems odd that such an amazing and huge museum would be so tricky to reach. Once you get there though, it's totally worth it. Before even going inside, you can see a bunch of cool looking planes. The interior is a giant hangar full of some very well-known planes, perhaps most famously is this Concorde which you can go inside and walk all around. On the main floor there is a huge variety of other planes, helicopters and artefacts to look at and we spent a lot of time just strolling around in awe. There are also two exterior areas, one of them contains a selection of passenger planes including a giant A380. This is one of the prototype planes and you can enter the building next to it to get inside to have a good look around and understand the scale and complexity of this thing. The other exterior area contains another Concorde which is not enterable as well as some other interesting planes. Overall this was probably the best museum we visited in Toulouse. It's just a shame it's not so easy to reach but really do make the effort because it's, it's really cool. Before signing off I just wanted to talk about some honourable mentions that didn't make it onto the list because Toulouse really has a lot more than 10 things to see. The Georges Benbergs Foundation is a large and ornate former mansion that is now an art gallery. It was closed for restoration so we could only visit the courtyard and it's due to reopen in early 2024. Not too far away is the Musée des Augustins, which is another fine art museum which was also closed for renovation and is not due to reopen until late 2025. That's it for Toulouse. Did I miss anything important? If so, let me know in the comments below. Have a great day and cheerio!